Good afternoon or good evening, folks. And welcome to another edition of the Bill Crane Report. My friend Dwayne Weiss is here with me. Hey there. And it's a full moon. And I got to tell you, we're both stoked up. So watch out. Fair warning. Do not be believing full moon lunacy. But L the word lunar, lunacy, come together. Yeah. But even doctors in emergency rooms see huge increases of crazy things coming in. I have told this story before. I believe in the full moon effect. I had a girlfriend from Foxborough. Uh, she's, she's left the area, moved to Wisconsin or Minnesota. I didn't know her. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> Ruthie Schmitz. Oh, I didn't know her. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And um, so Ruthie and I were out late one night, and we were going by the Foxborough State Hospital. Yep. And I just said jokingly, Boy, I'll bet you they're howling in there tonight. <laughs> How PC was that? And, and you know what Ruthie said to me? What? Oh, yeah. She said, my mother works in there. Yep. She said, um, they are. She said, turn around and go back. So I turned around, parked down at the big oak trees that were out front, and sat there, rolled the windows down. You couldn't. Was this Foxborough or Rentham? It's Foxborough. Foxborough, okay. Yep. You couldn't believe. The howling and the racket that was coming out of there. And she said, it's like that every full mm -hmm. moon. Yep. And it was summertime. All the windows were open. So um, ever since then, I have been a total believer oh, in the, the fact that... Uh, just too much, too much anecdotal evidence, if nothing yep. else. Full moon yep. affects some people and some animals in different ways. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Animals are kind of antsy and edgy and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, and, and stuff like, uh, you, you notice um, uh, when you trap animals, mm -hmm. you'll notice that when there's a full moon, a really bright full moon, your catch is gonna fall off. Okay. They, they don't yeah. like being exposed mm -hmm. uh, to the other night critters. Even uh, dairy cows. Yeah. On a full moon, you bring them in. Dairy cows low, low exactly where the stalls or stanchions they come in. When they come in, just like clockwork, they go up, 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 up and down the rows. They, they rarely ever miss. A full moon, they can't find their stall. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it takes you half an hour to sort them out. That's amazing. Really yeah. amazing. Well, you have got an absolute outrage to Yes, begin. I let's, have. Well, let's have it. Folks, you've often heard about taking your car to a dealer as opposed to a local service area like a, a, a tire store. Yesterday and today, I got proof. My wife's car had a uh, recall. It was the airbag, remember, that oh, yes, was blowing up and yep. shrapnel flying out. Well, we, we've had this notice since May, and the notice says that nobody should ride in the passenger side. You should put a, it, just the driver and everybody else should sit in the back seat. Well, that's kind of uh, unusual and inconvenient. So I kept calling the dealer, and they find that the, no, no parts, no parts. You're coming in real slow, hard to get. So I called in Friday, and they said, Somebody had a couple extra parts because somebody didn't show. So I said, all right, I'll be there Monday to, to take care of it. I went down there, and they, as a service, to sell you more goods, service, service they go through the entire car, not just the, what you're there for. Of course, they come up with a lot of things that you need this and you need that. So they gave me a list with the prices. Well, so happened some of this, I already was anticipating that we needed a grease job and oil change and some minor things. So today I went to Sullivan Tire in North Attleboro. When I was there, I gave him the list. I said, how much is for all these other things? He gave me the list. Can you do it? He said, oh yeah, of course. I want to give you some examples. Filters. A cabin filter, which is filters the air in from outside. It's a HEPA filter. And a engine filter, which filters the air going into the engine. Sure. Okay. The dealer for the cabin filler won $46.98. Sullivan Tire does it for $19.35. The cabin filter, $59.25 at the dealer, $19.35 at Sullivan. They're all $19.35. Grease job and all change, it was $10 difference, $39.99 to $39.99. Rotate the tires. Dealer, $24.95. Sullivan, free with an oil change. The bottom line was the dealer wanted $165.23 to do this. 
Sullivan did it for seventy eighty five, a ninety dollar savings on a hundred sixty five dollar bill. For the good guy. Yeah, and the filters were champions. I asked him what kind of filters you use. He's just champions. Anybody, if you do any, know anything about automotive, it's a lo long established quality product. They've been around since the twenties and the thirties. Making spark plugs. Oh yeah, and spark plugs for years stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. So there is a big difference. So one that, big that's difference. It. Yeah, shop around. Yeah. You know, I can tell you by experience. A friend of mine bought a new Cadillac. Took it down to a local Cadillac dealer. Yep. Uh, because he was hearing noises, so um, the uh, they fixed it. Whatever it was, the twidget arm was loose right. or something. Who the hell knows? But while he was there, he pointed out five or six things that really should be corrected. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, George uh, blew his stack and said, "This is a new car. What are you talking about?" Well, one thing led to another, yep. and he got to know the technician. Met him at a bar mm -hmm. later on or something, and well, they got talking. So he says, what was that hassle you get? He says, oh, he says, we have to do that. He says, and we get a 10% commission on yep, exactly. everything we sell you. Mm -hmm. That's why they'll do it every Whether time, go right through that car. Whether you need it or yep. not. Yep. Yeah, that's really neat. All the times I've gone to a Sullivan Tire, they don't do that. You no. This and this and this. That's yeah, what they think. Yeah, that's fix. it. Yeah. If it looks something, they, it's, if you got a tire that really looks dangerous, they'll point that out. But they'll just, yeah. yeah. There you go. So be careful, folks. Shop around. around. You betcha. Yeah, and the, by the way, folks, when you buy a new car, nothing says you have to bring it back to the that's dealer. That's right, by law. You, you can, can take any have, place you that's want. That's right. You can have the service work done anywhere. Just get an itemized bill. Yep, that's, that's right. All. So you can prove that it was that's done. That's right. Yeah. What else you got? Well, before we go any further, I want to welcome some new viewers. Okay. We were in the Midwest last week yep. before. We now have some new viewers in Minnesota. We have some new viewers in Wisconsin. And we have some new viewers in Pennsylvania. Glorioski, we're, we're infecting in the country. And we got viewers in Nevada now, too. Oh, man. And Arizona. So, uh, We've almost we almost got to the West Coast. So. Oh, we got one in the West Coast. Did we got we? one in L.A. All right. My, bro my brother-in-law. So all you new viewers, thank you, and keep watching. And if you like the program, tell everybody. If you don't yep. like it, tell everybody too. Yeah, and send money. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Plain brown in. We can be bought. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? This uh, making you mad. Uh, this this happened to me last night. I'm watching a football game. And I happened to doze off a little, hard to believe, but I, I did doze off. That's tough. And I woke up, and it was 10.30, and I said, oh, the game's over. It must be time to go to bed. I said, what, what the, who won? It was just halftime. Two hours, I'm thinking two hours for a, they played 30 minutes of football. Now, football does have stoppages with timeouts and people, they sure do. incomplete passes and stuff. But then I got somebody said, how many minutes of commercials was there? It's insufferable after a while. You, they just get going and they make another commercial break. Just get yep. going, another commercial break. Yep. And, and oh, uh, the, okay, so they stopped them on fourth down. The ball goes over to Kansas City. Let's have a break. Yeah, yeah, let's have a break. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. The offense is going off the field and the defense is coming on. We need a break for that. Yep. And today in the Wall Street Journal, there's an article exactly about that. Oh, fan, really? They're losing fan base. And the biggest thing is, it's too slow. It's too time consuming. They were very concerned about uh, their ratings. Um, and we talked about that over on the sports show, Gary mm -hmm. and I. And there's a couple of things. We think, first of all, uh, the nation uh, has promoted Colin Kaepernick into the number one Ugh. most disliked player in the National well, Football I can, can League. see that. Yep, that's number one. And number two, the violence that mm -hmm. takes place out there. I mean, guys are trying to take each other's heads off. That's right. They're purposely doing and, stuff. You know, we, I, as a nation, we have more and more single-parent families. Mm -hmm. And we've got to, a lot of families, and it, it's a tragedy. Because oh, absolutely. it should be a father and a mother, just like it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. 
Well, in many cases now, we've just got a female that's the head of the family. Women don't like violence, unless they're inflicting it on right. me. <laughs> uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, they are looking at football and they're saying, whoa, you're not watching that. It is too violent. You're not going to play football either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and those, and really, I think, are two key things why the ratings are going down. And that's a long-term thing mm -hmm. uh, because I think that uh, we're going to have to look at the violence in football. I, and Gary and I were talking about that. Um, I'm not sure that I'd let kids of mine play football. No, there's a movement now that yeah. not letting them play tackle. They're, yeah. A lot of areas are going towards the flag football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can have fun out there sure. running around. Especially little kids getting yeah. banged up like that. That's yeah. crazy. And you know, I've uh, watched the parents at Pop Warner Football mm -hmm. and Little League screaming and yelling at the kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a program on one of the cable channels called, there's where the Friday night, this is Friday night lights. Yeah, that, that, that's high school football. In Texas. Cell. Yeah. And then they got the Friday night mites or something. Okay. They're just the yeah. little kids. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's sick, some of these guys. Yeah, the coaching staff said, what, how they get them, they get the kids going, and they, you know, Christ, that kid will get knocked on his butt or bell rung, you know, you know, cowboy up. Yeah, yeah, cowboy up, yeah. yeah. Amazing. What else you got? Well, I understand that you, uh, we, we made a consensus here. We would not want this 911 operator taking our emergency calls. You want to go ahead and... Well, folks... Uh, this is Down a, in Houston, uh, we have a 911 operator accused of hanging up on thousands of emergency calls. This is just, She's being charged with two counts of interference with an emergency telephone call. Harris County court records show that 43-year-old Crenshanda Cren, Williams of Houston uh, was charged and freed on $2,000 bond. She is, the TV station is reporting she was involved in thousands of short calls lasting 20 seconds or less. In one incident, Williams hung up on a caller reporting a robbery in progress at a convenience store. The man called back and spoke to a different operator, but by the time police arrived, the store manager had been fatally shot. A security guard called 911 on March 13th to report two motorcycles driving recklessly at, the high, at high speed on a Houston freeway. Police said Williams was the 911 operator and cut short the call before the caller could provide his name. According to a recording of the call, Williams hung up and then said, Ain't nobody got time for this, for real. Police said when Williams was questioned on June of 2016, get, get this, folks. Well, this this she, is the rationale here. She told them she often hung up on calls because she didn't want to talk to anyone at that time. That's her job. Yeah, and the, the punishment for this yeah. is, is nil. There's, yeah. no, there's nothing there. You don't know. How many injuries and deaths yep. this woman has caused? That's right. When you call 911, you expect something to happen to help. You for, uh, expect a professional right. to answer the phone, listen to your problem, and dispatch That's help. right. But not yeah. this case. Not this case. Wow, this woman is a bad actor. Yeah, she's a bad actor for sure. Um, uh, by the way, I got a couple of others out of newspapers here that we might as well just talk about. By the way, folks, looking for something to do this weekend? I might suggest the National Police Scanner Museum is located in nearby Holliston, Mass. Really? Yeah. I didn't How know does that. that sound for an exciting little weekend <laughs> rendezvous? That's right. Meet your significant other over there and listen to police calls. I used to do that. There I, you go. I had a radio that was tuned 
uh, for NASCAR for the uh, pit yeah. stops, and, the pit, and it also well you could program to anything. Yeah. And you had in those days you had to dump the battery if you didn't mm -hmm. stand you it would give a memory. So on on like on Monday morning I'd be dumping the battery and we'll just turn it on to the local police reference. Sure, you hear all, all kinds right. all kinds of good things. All sorts of things. Now you can get it right on the internet. You don't even need the radio. Right, do it right on the computer. Yeah. Okay, folks. Here we have an actual letter to the editor of the Boston Globe. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is going to be good. As a staunch Hillary Clinton supporter, Gee, that's I was dismayed to see her recent sophomoric final meltdown ad taunting Donald Trump. What happened to when they go low, we go high? Americans of every party are revolted by the tenor of the campaign. Clinton should end on a high note and stick to talking about what's going on, or what, I'm sorry, and stick to talking about what she's going to do for the American people, many of whom are rightly angry at how government has been not working for them. And this is Miss Julia Scher, S-H-E-R, from Brookline, Mass. So, I have penned a response. This. Dear Julia. Right, right to the point there. Yep. She can't, Julia. She is morally and intellectually bankrupt. She is devoid of any independent thoughts. She is an empty shell. Love, Billy. I think that lays it right on the line with Julia. Hope Julia gets it. Here's one that irritated me. Okay. The title was A New Safe Route. It was about a refugees coming in from, I believe it was Guatemala. And uh, this woman left to get to the United States and left her kids, her particularly young son. And the, the paper, I think it was the news, it was a globe, how great a mother she was. 15 years later, she's finally getting her kid. And I thought, I don't care how bad a condition is, who, what mother, walks away and leaves your five-year-old behind? How can you do that? Far too many of them yep. do that. Yep. In the because I'm going to seek a better life. Well, yep. I'll I'll call for you sometime. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't wait up. Yeah. If the phone rings. Uh, don't answer. Yeah. It might be me. Yeah. What What kind of mother does that? Uh, a, a woman that's not worthy of the name mother. And, and the Globe thought she was a great woman for finally getting her getting her kid here. You know, I'm going to cancel the Globe again. I told my wife yesterday, all this morning. That's it. They're yeah, gone. It, it's 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 painful to read. It is. Just absolutely painful. You know, to the surprise of the astronomers, it's now estimated that the, we have up to two trillion, trillion galaxies. That's hard to comprehend. First of all, it's impossible to comprehend. Yep. Number two, there is no way in hell that they can viably figure this out. No. And number three, and most importantly of all, who the hell cares? Yeah, what's, it, what's it going to do to us? We've got enough problems here mm -hmm. without trying to find one of the two trillion uh, galaxies out there so we can, uh, I don't know, mess with them. Yeah, I never understood this pure science for pure science's no. sake. I, no. don't, I don't understand. It has no bearing on anything except uh, satisfy did, somebody's did curiosity. Did you meet any of these guys, these scientists? They're yes, all mad. they're all mad. Yeah, they're all crazy. Uh, you know, and we waste money. Of now course we, we do. We we not waste. We just throw it away. Here's an article in here. Worcester Airport. Oh yeah. Got seven point seven five million dollar grant to improve the taxiways. Who the hell is taxiing at the Worcester Airport? I'm telling Some you. Some guy with his little piper. They, they there's don't. nothing left anymore. No, there. there's nothing going on there. Why I mean, would this? One of the Talk about a waste James of money. James McGovern, U.S. Representative James oh, McGovern, yeah. got him seven uh, seven point seven five million dollars. What a boondoggle! Talk about a pork barrel deal. 
I know in, in terms of the national budget, that's, that's not true. a lot of money. But you know, the old saying, well, you know, you spend $5 million here, $10 million there, and a billion there, and pretty soon you got real money. Well, well, of course you got real money because it adds up. Listen, if, I understand this idea the Democrats have that we need this stuff. It's make work. Yeah, that's what it you is. It filters down money to uh, people. But for heaven's sakes, it is a waste of time. It's not needed. Yep. Find something that's needed and do it. God almighty. I don't have to mention Big Dig because that's, that's a classic. Boy, I got one here you now. Go ahead. All right. All right. Just a little question here. Vacation time. Okay. Who gets the most to be paid vacation and holidays in, in the world? What do you think? It's uh, Portugal or... Um, You're close. They're right up in there. You know, it's France. France. Oh, I should have known. Yep. 38 days paid by law. Now, I ain't going to go through this whole thing, but how many do you think the United States get paid by law? 11 or 12? Try zero. Zero. The United States government has no law in the books that they have to make. Oh, okay. Anything. All right. Yeah, yeah I was, thinking, state. About, I was yeah. thinking about uh, days States off. have individual yeah. things, but yeah. the federal has nothing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> what a difference. Yeah, and, and of course in Europe, um, they shut down whole countries month for August, a month. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another one has the month of July. Mm -hmm. Another one has the month of June. And <sighs> unbelievable. And then people that do have vacation here, are afraid, a lot of them are afraid to take it. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're afraid to be out of the office because yeah. what's going to happen while they're gone? The long swords will come out, and they'll be cut up. And yep. when they get uh, back into the office, you'll find out they're laid off. Yeah, and they can't get away from that. They got it now. They got to check every. Every every hour or so, they send the emails, emails and do yeah. all kinds yeah. of stuff online. Oh, yeah. I used to go on vacation that Friday night when I left. I never knew. I didn't know my employer existed, and I wouldn't call them until Monday morning when I got back. Absolutely, and, and, that's I, the way and I never told be. them where. I never told anybody where I was going to be either. They don't need to know. Yep, I'm telling you. Well, you know, you and I have ranted and raved, and we're going to continue to rant and rave about the Attleboro Suns reporting. Oh my God, they're getting worse. Especially their um, editorial page. Yep. It is disgraceful. It, oh, it is. It really is. Yep. And they use the headlines too. They're, yeah. they, they took a, a page from the Globe on that. However, we do have one interesting article. Betsy Shea Taylor. Wasn't she one of the she, yeah, she family was. members of they, the owners yeah, at one yeah. point? Yeah, okay. Or something. And she's a uh, uh, the formerly uh, editor, yeah, right, she's yeah. a writer. But anyway, should have been retired a long time ago. Well, anyway, um, she's, this is almost infantile, but it's a good talking paper for us to talk about. Yes, it is. Um, the, she says, uh, Many concrete questions and answers have been ignored. They're too difficult to understand, too terrifying to consider, too dull to pass. They're no fun. So she asks a whole bunch of questions here mm -hmm. about the upcoming election. And I am going to ask you the questions. Okay. Let's see what you have to say about this. The first one is silly. I'm going to skip it. Should public higher education be free? These, by the way, what she is saying is, these are all questions you should consider before voting. Uh, and you should understand where your candidate fits. Okay. And her, what his or her answers are. So I ask you, sir, voting for a higher office, Mr. Dwayne Weiss, should public higher education be free? Well, first of all, there's nothing's free. There's no it can't free. be free because somebody's got to pay for it. And who's that going to be? The government. Well, who's the government? This Us. is not a magic. It's not a, is it? well, that's, not, that's nobody's money. That's the government's money. Uh -uh. Uh, that's your money, yeah. our money. They don't grasp that concept. <laughs> so there is no such thing as free. Should the student pay for it? Yes. Absolutely. Should the, should the uh, universities be made to efficiently use that money 
an education? Yes. Should they be able to waste like they do now? Mm -mm. No, and not only that, but if we had, quote unquote, free higher education. Oh my God, what a waste. It would be uh, every single layabout would say, I don't want to go to work, Daddy. Yep, I, I want to go to college. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but you can't even add two and two. Yeah, well, they're going to show me in college. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, because the students don't have any, if they don't have a dog in a fight. That's right. There, there's no incentive. No. To, now, well, a friend of ours, he was an attorney. And still I, a friend? It, it, yeah. Yeah, okay. But I, I shouldn't have used the past tense. He is a friend. He is still an attorney. He just retired. Uh, but... When his boys went to school, he convinced them that they he will pay their tuition and fees, but he's going to he's only pay half. They owe him whatever they spent. And he says, you know, he says they went to school thinking, I got money in this deal. I'm going to spend. I, I'm not going to waste this. Just fool around. I did the same thing with our son. It work? Yeah. Good. And we we the day of graduation. It came with the day. It was day of graduation. We went to. Uh, with some friends to uh, Lafayette, not Lafayette House, uh, uh, down the street, uh, I forget. Uh, the Italian anyway. place there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nice place. Yep. For dinner, and we had a card, and in the front I put, there's how much a four years cost at UMass. It wasn't as, not like it is today, but it was, I don't know, it was like $40,000, $42,000 for the four years. And I opened up, and I says, you owe. 21, the next page, I wrote paid in full on it for, a, oh my God, he said, thank you, thank you. Because he was, he was concerned that he was going to owe yeah. all this money. But he didn't waste a dime. Good, good for him. And we, we went out there and I gave him a credit card. In those days, kids didn't really get credit cards on their own. The parents could yeah. get one right. in their name, but you're still your account. Yeah. And he was there the first week or three, four days, and he calls up all worried. He's dead. I don't want you to be upset when you get the bill. And he says, my chemistry book was $75. He said, I knew you were going to have a cow when you get that bill. I said, I don't worry about that. I said, what I worry about is Leo's pizza or Joe's bar and grill on that thing. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be concerned about. Absolutely. Is profiling of Muslims permissible? I think it's not only permissible, it's necessary. I agree with you. I agree with you. It should be mandatory. Yep. You only look at, and I, I I don't know a whole lot about them, but I knew something about them, is that the Israeli military. Yeah. They profile big time. Big time. Big time. You got an Arab that's getting on that, what is it, El Al? Yeah. The, their, their airline? El Al, yeah. Yeah, chances are he's going to get stripped, so stripped. Listen, anybody from that part of the world today, yep. you've got to put them under the microscope. Absolutely. Yep. Is... A flat tax on income, the right path. Now that one's difficult for me to. Um, no. No, you're absolutely right. Because the flat tax on the very wealthy wasn't going to mean anything. No, it's, it's so minor that it's such a it's such a small percentage of their income. Like a mosquito yeah. bite. And where the the low income, it's a big chunk of their income. Of course it is. Yeah. And. Um, to whom much is given, much is expected. I have yep. no problems with the graduation tax. No, I don't either. Tax. Should the Keystone XL pipeline be approved? I'm a fan of pipelines, so I think yes. Me too. Absolutely. It's I'm a most... fan of business yep. and jobs and cheap energy. So for all of the above, it should be. Pipelines are the safest, the most efficient way of moving and whatever you can move through that pipe. I don't care what it is. Yep. If it's gas, or it's fuel, it's uh, turtles, uh, turtles, whatever, yeah, it, is whatever it is, that's the most through. efficient. This idea of putting, them up, putting this fuel or this oil on train cars with an antiquated track system and then wonder why did the, this thing crash? Why did it burn? Why did it burn down this town? Well, what do you expect it to happen? Yeah, and, and not only that, but um, it's slow. Mm -hmm. um, and the same idea with uh, ocean freighters. Yep. Bring the oil all the way to the coast, put it on a boat, bring it down here, take it off the boat. Come on, for heaven's sakes, run it through a bloody pipe and when I was be a kid, done with it. They put 
pipelines across our farm. Of course they do. And you, know, you, don't, you don't even know it's there. That's right. Except once in a while you might have a, a, a where it comes to a road, a little thing like this, yeah. it goes under. And once in a while you get a royalty check. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now this one is a, I wrote here, phony issue. Should Social Security be privatized? No, not now, because I don't know how you'd privatize it and what, how are you going to invest it? What's it going to go into? With the volatile, the stock market the way it is and the world situation it is, it could be a good thing or it could be an absolute disaster. Yeah. The, look, all of that smooths out over yep. 10, 15, 20, 25, 35 years. And the stock market eventually goes up 8.4 or 8.6. It will correct itself at a certain time. In a balanced fund yep. that is stocks and bonds mm -hmm. goes up one point less than all stocks. So it goes up seven and a half or something like that. I do but, believe that the Social, Social Security is extremely mismanaged. It is. It's a pit. Anybody that's got a project can dip into it. And borrow yeah. the money. Yeah, there, there's and, no reason for and it. And they, they repay it 2%. Yeah. Now, the, the, the phony issue is that Republicans have said, look, let's put these, rather than just dump the money in this big pit and pull it out as we need it and get this ridiculous 2 or uh, two or two and a half or whatever the hell it is from the government yep. for the use of the money, take the money and invest it in a mixture of investment vehicles, mm -hmm. very conservative, be they index funds, bond funds, yep. or whatever. Let the people decide the amount of risk they want to take. And that's it. Now, that's not privatizing. No. That is allowing the people to decide what venue, what investment venue they think is appropriate, mm -hmm. and the government will do it. It's all done with computers. Yep. And this is what they call privatizing, yep. which is ridiculous. It's that's a ridiculous right. term. Social Security can be easily fixed. There's several ways mm -hmm. of doing it. Uh, you can increase the FICA holding. Yeah. Oh, that's a, a given. Yeah. Yep. Or you can raise the age of entitlement. In, entitlement. Yeah. Or you can take the ceiling off or raise the ceiling. Uh, the, destroy the ceiling. Yep. Somebody that's got a, a $2 million income certainly doesn't need that. Nope. That poultry little Social Security check coming yeah. in every month. Right. Um, and they, um, you know, if you make it so that everybody pays the same percentage, mm -hmm. what could be fairer? Yeah, nothing. You're nothing. nothing. Uh, will the min minimum wage rise? Well, this is silly. Of course, of course it's it going to rise. And that's the end of it. It's not going to go down. No. Good Lord. Um, but where does it rise to? That's, that's, that's going to be the... That's right. That's some of these, some of these uh, people are going crazy. And they're also now beginning to realize, whoops, we may have raised it too high. <laughs> mm -hmm. Should some prescription spending be capped? What the hell she's talking about? I don't know. Uh, sure, it really no is. No idea. She's obviously not in Social Security and Medicare. Is, yeah. Is waterboarding an acceptable tactic? I guess it all depends whether you're on the board or not. I have to be careful here. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I think I, I'm going to go on a limb here and say I believe it is, because um, you may not agree, but I don't know how to put this. Well, it works. Yeah, it works. And I was in, okay when I was in Vietnam. I was a military intelligence advisor to MSS, the Military Security Services, and I know what they did. And I. To save myself from going to uh, Leavenworth at some point, I, I just, I know they always did it and they were going to do it whether, no matter what I did it. 
and it was effective. I, I really believe in psychologically getting information from them. Yeah. Um, in fact, intelligence, we were taught to do that, find a weak point and drive at it, drive at it, pound it, pound him and pound him with this. Deprive them to, of sleep. Yep. Like they, they wanted to get more, they had this find one of these scared of dogs and they'd bring this vicious dog in it, let him snap right here. What terrified him, it didn't bite him, it just terrified him. Mm -hmm. that, that was taught at that time, that, to use them kind of things. Yeah. But um, I think uh, there's a bunch of things that yeah. are acceptable and we probably don't need to know any more it wasn't about it than that. It wasn't called waterboarding when I was there. It right. was called Chinese water torture. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Again, Ed, that, not PC. <laughs> you know, Listen. We're not PC anyway. So. War is an abomination. That's right. It's an obscenity. All right? And mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing as watching sausage made. That's right. You don't feel like eating that crap afterwards. Yep. Um, is it wise to send troops to battle ISIS? Again, very difficult question. Um, if we could identify ISIS as, an, as a group or as a force, yes. If you can't identify them, no, because you, you're going to be in a quagmire. Who, who are you going to shoot at, basically? Yeah. Is it wise to send troops to battle ISIS? I mean, that's just a dumb question. Yeah, because who, who is it? We it, don't know who it is. Yeah, and also, the other thing, too, is this president has probably been the worst president for the military oh, of any God. president we've ever had. But the rules of engagement, mm -hmm. it all depends on the rules of engagement. If you have to wait until they shoot at you first before you through fire a, back, yep. or if there's a civilian within 500 yards, you can't return the fire, no. No, that's it, because you're just, you're just committing that's suicide. Just, that's exactly right. But if you are following sound military methods, if you are over there to win, if you're over there yep. to destroy ISIS, then yes. Yes, that's, that's absolutely that's right. right. Now, I'm telling you, she has re really gone off the deep end here with a couple more of these okay. questions. Let's, let's hear it. Hard to believe? Uh, no, not with her. <laughs> if I'm a black man, will I be safe on the streets? Well, again, that's kind of a loaded question. If you're a black man walking on the streets of Norfolk? Yes. So safe as if you were in your mother's arms. You walk it down uh, some street in this town of Rox or area of Roxbury? No, I don't care. Where there's crack houses no, all over the place? I don't care if you're blue, place. green, yellow, or, or purple. Right. They shoot you in the head dead as a doornail. Yeah. This Black Lives Matter thing that's, that's, is, is a bunch of crap. It's an excuse and it's anarchy. And, and it, the whole thing is. They don't honor their own dead. No. They're, no, they don't honor one another. Black lives don't matter to these guys. Nope. They kill each other. Yep. Blacks killing blacks. That's right. That's yeah. the biggest cause of death in this country are you know, young black males and other black males. That's right. Yeah. So how can you possibly hang that guilt trip on me about Black Lives Matter? That's exactly what it is. It's an opportunistic That's right. Action. And once again, yep. the President of the United States. If I'm, this is a great one now, if I'm a police officer, will I be safe on the streets? No, no, no police not, officer no. is safe on any street in the U.S. No, they've never, the virtue of the fact that you're carrying a weapon, you're going after other guys that have weapons, with the, the bad guys, it's, it's not a safe occupation. Listen, the it, worst calls, you talk to a cop, the worst oh, calls. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, the domestic domestic, yeah. domestic uh, dispute. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. You, when you walk in that door, you have no idea what's going on. You usually are the enemy when you go in there. Yeah. We got us. Who calls? She oh, calls yeah. that he's beating the beating the crap out of yep. her. You walk in, she turns on you. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, this is foolishness. Oh, here's one. That I'm ceding this a hundred percent to you. <laughs> okay. That's going to be. Should genetically modified food be labeled? 
I, I would think she means as such. GMOs. Or, I'm, not, I'm sure she doesn't mean, should it just say corn on the outside or beans. I know what she means. Should oh, there really? be a, You've plumbed the depths of this woman's mind? I, I, I know what she means, but you're right. right. Not just corn or beans. I want to say no, and here's why. We've been eating GMO foods for generations. Do you think the tomato that you pick on your vine today looks like the original tomatoes? They didn't have big boys back oh, then. Oh, no, no, no. They had deformed little rotten little yeah. things like that. The corn used to be ears about this long. Yeah. Okay. The, the string beans, the soybeans. Yeah, do you everything. think butter and sugar corn was original? No. 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 All these foods have been modified genetically. That was just done by selective breeding, but it's That's still right. genetic modification. Of course it is. And so nobody's dying. We don't have three heads because we eat, eat sweet corn today that's got beautiful ears, or, or field corn does 60, 60 acres to the bushel. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's, stand, it's solid, nutritious food. And the fact that you sometimes, you know, when they get a, a weird combination, they might have, a, I'm just making something up here, mm -hmm. a soybean and they take a, a gene from a codfish and they join them together. So what? If mm -hmm. nature can do it, they would do it by itself. Oh, sure. Maybe a thousand years from now, but it would eventually have happened. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's mania is what it is. It, yeah, listen, if the food is better for you, has more vitamins, minerals, whatever, less calories, and tastes better. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's genetically changed or nope. not. That's, should E-Verify be mandatory in the workplace? What the hell is E-Verify? I was going to ask I you what it is. I know that. Well, anyway, this, um, who, and then she ends up last sentence. Where does your candidate stand? Do you know? Do you care? Sad. On those items, I, who cares? Yeah, sad as it may seem to believe, most people don't care. Not, not, not that, about not that range of information. Yeah, and, and she was loopy here, the yeah. stuff she picked. Oh, stuff. oh here, you know, here's one more to, uh, uh, she, she's just rambling here. Donald Trump wants to scrap the Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare. Hillary Clinton wants to improve it. Well, did she ask her husband? He wants to scrap it. Yeah. I mean, well, anyway. Um, All right, while I you're have, looking for that, I got yes, a question for you. Go right ahead. What do you think of terminal right to try laws for terminal patients? I know where I stand on this. I think you do. Terminal. The, the right to try laws. Right now, you can't get a drug unless it's been through all these field testings. Right. And it has to be 100% safe. And they right. have to list all the things. Now, suppose you had a, somebody had a disease. I don't want to. Cancer. Yeah, sure. a cancer. Over here, this drug company has got a, a thing that's showing promise in the lab. Right. But it's not. We don't know if it's safe or unsafe. We or haven't not. Uh, tested Here's it. Here's somebody over here with three people. weeks to live or four yeah. weeks to live. Should that person have a right to get that drug and maybe save them? As long as they are uh, cognizant yep. of what the risks are. Yep, that's right. Then sign the paper Whatever. and let's get that's on. The, I do too. Yep. I agree with that 100%. Because you don't know what's going to happen with that drug that's test. That's exactly right. Then the person over here has got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. No. If it kills him, he's going to go anyway. He's know. got three weeks yep. or four weeks yep. anyway. That's right. But well, a perfect example of that. Uh, my stepmother um, was faced with a very, very strange and rare thing. The blood vessels in her brain were expanding mm -hmm. and growing okay. and uh, new roots and uh, they're yeah. going offshoots. The doctor said to her, uh, here's a, the story, Joni. Um, <clears throat> I've operated in these cases. I'm going to tell you right now, 
your choices, uh, your chances are maybe at best 8% yep. of coming through the operation. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you what is going to happen if you don't have the operation. You're going to drop dead. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a massive stroke and it's going to kill you. You hope like hell you're not driving down the street and you kill eight more people with you. Mm -hmm. Right, or, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and it's just a matter of months before this happens. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to happen relatively quickly. So he gave her the choice. And she said, uh, don't. She said, uh, I don't want to live that way. Um, put me on the operating table and let's take a chance. Good idea. And she died right on the operating table. Because so, he told her that was yeah, a, a real distinct yeah. possibility. Yeah. But she was given the choice. She went off fighting. And she went off fighting. Absolutely yep. right. Exactly right. Yep. Um, tell me something. Will you explain to me? Me explain yep. to you? Well, oh, that's going to be the... <laughs> These halfwits, and there's no other way to describe them except oh, yeah. halfwits, that dress up as clowns oh, my God. and go out scaring kids. When we were out in the Midwest, it was, I don't know, it was ha probably happening here too. But the, the local, local people, the local towns, you know, that one time we were in, it, it had, the university was there, Stout, University of Wisconsin, there wasn't, the town's only 25,000 people. They arrested some weirdo, probably a college, I suspect a college. Yeah. He was dressed up as the, that clown from Stephen King's It. Yeah. And he had a rubber knife. And he's chasing another kid, and they're both in on it, you know, like he's going to stab him. But a police were on the, on the TV and said, don't do that. We don't know that this is a rubber knife and a setup. You could have got killed doing that. Absolutely. And, you know, oh, please, uh, don't tell me I, oh, dear. Oh, no, I think it's right here someplace. Um, the... Uh, the police um, here we go well I, I think I've lost it okay, well, oh no it? here it is here it is uh, Monday night several hundred University of Connecticut students it seems to be gathered the university people just before midnight yep. in the cemetery ready to do battle with menacing clowns they had heard might be lurking among the headstones. Wow. So angering police who had to respond. There are many other emergencies and calls for service that troopers and other first responders need to get to without being misdirected to yeah. a prank. The only good thing I think is going to happen, I think this is going to be short-lived. It's yeah. going to be here, gone, and it's going to be, it'll move on to something else. Because, but they, they gave examples here of a couple of adults chasing yeah. school buses, scaring kids, kids as yeah. they get off the school bus. <clears throat> Isn't there enough to scare the hell out of kids without these halfwits dressing oh. up with one thing in mind, and that's scaring the living begoshes out of kids? I mean, think about the really scary things that exist for oh, kids today. Absolutely, Elizabeth Warren, <laughs> That's a, Charlie Moore, the mad fisherman. fisherman yeah. I hate him. Oh, I, I can't stand him either. It's loud motorcycles. Oh, that one—that's a pet peeve of me. I live on on a major road here. James Carville. Oh, yeah, him too. Ugly school teachers. <laughs> The I, I, I can't I can't speak on that. I went to broke his school. <laughs> the alleged reporting of the Boston Globe. Oh yeah, that's the editorial pages of the Attleboro Sun Chronicle. <laughs> Barack Obama. The, I like this one. Bill <laughs> and Hillary sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. <laughs> I mean, isn't that a scary thought? Oh my God. Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't like him either. That Viagra ads. Yeah. Ticks. Yeah. Pit bulls. Ticks. I've had Lyme disease too. Yep. I'm, so, I'm mm -hmm. not a friend of ticks. Pit bulls. That's another the worthless. Yep. Pet. Snakes. Yep. Democrats. 
Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Janet Reno, don't ever invite her to a backyard barbecue. Light beer and the people that drink it. Amen to that. Yep. All TV. I tell them, you buy a Bud Light, just take a Bud and dump a few ice cubes in yeah. it. Yeah. All TV newscasters, Jack Edwards, the Bruins TV announcer, and alligators. I mean, there's things that really scare kids, and these clowns want to do more damage? Mm -hmm. Oh, Santa Reno was scary. I sat next to her on a plane. Right, right, sat right oh, behind Oh, really? Her. Coming back from Minneapolis one time, yep. she got on the plane. Honest God, she did not fly first class. But they had all, you know, three rows, three seats. She sat in the middle, and the seat on either side was empty. I was right behind her. She's about 12 feet tall. Yeah. You didn't try to move in and scoop No, her? I just kind of like, mm. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a couple of real stern looking guys escorted her onto the plane. I thought, well. Bill uh, Clinton said that was his biggest mistake. What, not dating uh, Janet Reno? Appointing her. Oh, okay, appointing her. With Bill Clinton, you never know. If it's female, what do you want? Oh, what are you going to go with that? Man, I'm telling you. Uh, the good old days. Um, I, I saw an email that was going around. The, yep. the, I picked a few things off of it. Uh, Hillary was put in charge of Hillary Care, conceived in the dark by Democrats only, and it imploded. She was put in charge of naming a female attorney general by Bill. Yep. Zoe Beard, remember, remember oh, yeah. her? Yep. Yeah, yep. she flamed out. Kimba Wood, she oh, yeah. went down These in names flames. Of, names in the past. And Janet Reno, described by Bill as my worst mistake. Um, Hillary recommended Lanny Guarnier as head of the Civil Rights Commission. Well, I haven't heard these names for yep. a lot of them for a long time. Yeah, and her own party rebelled mm -hmm. over her radical views, and Bill withdrew her nomination. She recommended, here's, here's a, a real be a bunch of beauties. These are all former um, partners, law partners at uh, Rose Law Firm. Oh, yep. Wes Hubble. Oh boy, yep. He for was... uh, Webb Hubble. Webb Web Hubble. Hubble. Yep. For the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. Vince Foster for the White House staff and William <laughs> Kennedy for the Treasury Department. All of those choices. Hubble went to prison. Foster was a suicide or was murdered, and Kennedy was forced to retire. Yep. So then there was Travelgate, Filegate, Bimbo eruption, um, and these are all things that she was in the middle of, and all bad choices. Yep. Can you imagine? But all covered today, just nothing, yep. they don't exist. No, but can you imagine the choices that she's going to make as the oh. next president, should she make it? That, Bill, that's legitimately scary. You talk about scaring kids? Yeah. That scares me. Yeah. Um, pairings. Um, uh, we yep. have good pairings and bad pairings. So I'm going to give you some good ones. Okay. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Classic. Bogey and Bacall. Oh, yeah, these are all classics. It's, it's got to be... Meat and potatoes. Yep. Fish and chips. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Susie and Billy. <laughs> if they, in case, I, if you're sitting someplace in Wisconsin, Minnesota, that's him and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> right. Glad we cleared that yeah, out. I, Needle and thread. Yeah. Corn, beef, and cabbage. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so here's bad choices. Bad pairings. Bill and Hill. Bonnie and Clyde. Oh boy, yeah. Leopold and Lowe. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yep. And politi politicians and lobbyists. Good, now, good, good, good list. Now, there are two writers for the Globe who, I'll let you describe them, but one is Joan uh, Vinaki, oh my God! And the other one is Yvonne Abraham. Now, which list do you suppose that unholy pairing belongs oh, with? Those two can come up with the god awful ideas and conclusions that sane people would never come up with. They are toxic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the EPA ever looked at them, they'd both be quarantined. Yeah, they'd both be a 
what do they call it, a website, super yeah. site? Yeah. I mean, they had just, oh. One of the well, few people I like at the Globe. I like Jeff Jacoby. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, what was his name, Cullen? Kevin Cullen? Oh, yes, yes. He, he can be good. Uh, he's a grown-up. Yeah, he's yeah. a grown-up. Um, up front uh, is a column in the Globe magazine, magazine. I have Sundays. trouble with that magazine. Yeah, no, me too. Yeah. And um, they take the McLaughlin, McLaughlin group to task. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, John McLaughlin, gruff exterior, and Pat Buchanan, and uh, they beat up on people, and they used to beat up on Eleanor Clift, and they hatched uh, Donald Trump. This guy, this is Neil a, Swidey. You as a, th that, that magazine is so elitist. Yep. From cover to cover. Yep. He, uh, and my daughters are just coming into their political awareness. Two are in high school, uh, one in middle school. And I begin to wonder, uh, the ringleader was John McLaughlin, who wore boxy glasses and a near permanent scowl. Bad actor. So I'm going to ask you about Neil Swidey as we wind down. Okay. Rare roast prime of beef or fondue and spinach salad? Him? Yeah. Fondue. Pickup truck or a Prius? Oh, geez, no question about it. Barbecue and beer or brie in classical water? Yeah, brie and chablis. Football game or a speech at Harvard by a whining commie? It's self-evident. L.L. Bean boots? Or sandals and Birkenstocks. That's what I was trying to think. Birkenstocks. <laughs> Bruins and beer at the sportsman club or a poetry reading at the library? Oh, I know. I do the poetry. I probably see him there. Yeah. Ronald Reagan or Queen Latifah? Oh, Queen Latifah all the way. Deer hunting trip to Maine or a lunch at Aunt Julia's tea house? Oh, Aunt Julia, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we nailed him. I guess we did. Um, folks, we just got the high the sign. High sign that it is time to bail. And they're sick uh, of us, so they're going to throw yep. us out of here. That's but I'm going to end because I got about 20 seconds left. Okay, Went to the it. registry. Uh, I got this from the registry to re register my car. Yeah. So I went to AAA. Okay. Did it, work? it says on the back. Renew at select AAA offices. Payment by cash, check, or money order. Credit card or debit card. Went down, Sounds gave them my fair enough. went down, gave them my credit card, and they said, "We don't take credit cards, cash only." Uh, she said, "It's a big mix-up with the registry," and so we just said, "The heck with it." I ran the same thing down in Attleboro. Yeah, the registry down there. They weren't taking one of the things that they said they were taking. Yep. They got there, they 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 wouldn't take it. Yep. And just one more. I'm going to squeeze something in 10 seconds. Janet Yellen said the Fed now probably won't raise rates. Political. She's not going to do it because she doesn't want to do anything that might harm uh, Hillary. That's right. It will look bad. The yep. stock, stock market takes a stock dive market and it's going goes to, down. Yep. They're going to say, oh, Hillary's fault. Nope. All so, right. So much for the independence of oh, the yeah. Fed. Yeah. With, on that cheerful note, my dear friends, have a wonderful middle of fall. Yes. And we will be back to scare you after Halloween. We scare ourselves. We'll do it <laughs> to you too. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>